Hello and welcome to today's Knowledge Share. I'd like to cover a proof of concept that I've been working on in relation to my blog post article that you see here, covering the real world uses of the Soundex algorithm. Within the article I cover a .NET implementation of the algorithm and I'll be incorporating that into the Microsoft Dynamics ERP solution suite. The real world application is going to be a very simplistic client inception process and for this demonstration I'm going to be using Telerik WPF components. More information about Telerik's WPF components can be found here and you can download a, a 30 day free trial, fully functional free trial at this URL address. Ok, let's get started. I've generated a WPF user control using Telerik components within Visual Studio and compiled and deployed it to the Dynamics AOS. I've included it as a reference within the AOT and I'm hosting it within this form here within a managed host control. Let's go ahead and open up our form to have a look at our WPF user control. The user control is made up of two expander sections the top section is the search section which will allow us to do our entity duplication checks. If, if, our, if we pass our entity duplication checks and we discover that the entity doesn't exist within our database, the next thing that we would want to do is then go ahead and create our individual. Now I'm not going to be focusing too much on creation of the customer table record within this particular video. I want to focus mostly my attention on the Soundex algorithm, so I'm just going to minimize that for now and concentrate mostly on this top expander section. Now I'm going to put in a search term for the name and a search term for the town. Above each search term there's a slider that always starts off at a default position uh, and the slider determines the variation in the Soundex code searching that will take place. If I click search on this uh, it goes away, uses the Soundex algorithm to calculate the code for Bell and London and then using the slider values it applies a plus or minus range around that code to return a number of entities within the Dynamics database that relate, uh, that fall within that range. As you can see we've got a couple of good matches here, we've got one that's slightly out. Now by just fine tuning or reducing that Soundex code range to zero and reapplying the search, you can see that we've filtered out some of the um, outlying uh, search terms. Where this is most useful is when you have similar sounding names. So for example, the Soundex for John is J500. And the Soundex for a variant spelling of John is also J500. If I now type in John's, that's at J520. Johnson is J525. So as you can see, as the variations go down the list and as the, as the name gets extended, the variation codes start to get wider and wider apart. Now I'm going to be using the Soundex algorithm just to kind of isolate spelling differences and name extensions. Okay, let's reopen up the client inception wizard. Now let's type in, let's set the variation to about 40. I'm going to type in John and he lives in a place called Burnham. Let's click search on that. And you can see it's gone away and it searched both John and Burnham using the slider scales up here and it's come back with a variant of John, Joan, Jones, Johns, Johan and Johnson. So given that level of variation John, the, the Soundex code for John has come back with all of these matches and in relation to the town name Burnham I probably misspelled it because it's come back with better spellings here uh, or correct spellings but it's also come back with a, li a little bit more variation on Burnham. So I think that's the correct spelling. So I'm just going to go and reduce that 
down to zero and that should filter out some more results which it has done but it's still coming back with John's, Jones, Joan and John so if I start reducing the slider <coughs> excuse me, against the search name we should start to see entries dropping out the list and now it's actually come back and it's left us with just two entries John and Joan both living in Burnham now neither of these entries may relate to the actual John in Burnham that we need to create and if that's the case then you can go ahead and start filling in the entity inception form here to create a new client but before you do that it'd probably be worthwhile checking just to double check whether that John and that John are indeed exactly the same person because it doesn't look a million miles away in terms of spelling so double clicking on that grid entry should open up the cast table form which will allow you to see the full range of information relating to that particular client and perhaps there'll be further information in here in the various sections that will help you isolate as to whether that is indeed the original John Smith uh, sorry John from Burnham that we're hoping to create okay once you've satisfied yourself that the new John Smith isn't a duplicate entity the next thing to do is to go ahead and create the customer record so let's open up the second expander section and I'll just fill this in very quickly with some very basic information relating to the new customer let's give them a default customer group and tax code I won't bother filling in too much information city of Burnham and a county in as well. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and insert that new client. It's giving me a very positive message here. A new account number has been allocated. I just click OK on that because the account number dependency property has changed within the WPF user control. Um, Dynamics has automatically registered that change and it's opened up the new customer account for me. And we can see that. Um, just checking some of the settings that all of them seem to have gone through including the address okay that concludes the demonstration of my proof of concept thank you for watching